Like for example, early on I had a lucid dream where I was driving this red truck that I used to have and I was driving past my grandmother's house and there was this guy following behind me like, you know, just road raging it up. And, and I pull over and I'm in my grandmother's backyard and he hops out and he's like yelling at me and all this stuff and coming up towards me. And, and I just, all of a sudden, I reach down out of nowhere and just pull out out of nowhere the garden trowel. And as soon as he's like three feet away from me, I become lucid. And the instant I become lucid, everything freezes. And I realize, I say, okay, this aspect of myself is showing me what it represents. It's being very confrontational right now. And so I knew it represented the confrontational part of myself. And everything's still frozen. And so I real slow take the garden trowel and dig it straight into his heart. And then I wake up. Welcome to another episode of Awaken Now What. I'm your spiritual awakening coach, JR. And I'm your master energy healer, Helen. Awaken Now What is a podcast that illuminates your spiritual awakening and ascension. Helen, have you ever had a lucid dream? Not that I really know of, but I know that you have, right? Right. I've had a handful. I've had a handful. And today we'll be talking about the fascinating phenomena of lucid dreaming. And to help us with this conversation, we have spiritual mentor and author Tarek Uday. Let's uh, Tarak Uday. Let's welcome Tarak. <laughs> Hi, Tarak. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Before we deep dive into the world of lucid dreaming, mm -hmm. uh, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and what triggered you to explore metaphysics. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I've been studying and teaching metaphysics for over a decade. Um, I mean, what got me into it was just unwrap like one day i woke up and I, I knew i needed more energy i didn't have a lot of energy and it was mm -hmm. like in my face i don't have energy and i need to fix this so um my dad he used to teach me tai chi um when i was a kid so i called him up and asked him hey man okay so i know what you're talking about chi is energy i want to know more about energy like tell me like where i should go he said okay look up qigong and go from there and that's uh -huh. really where it started i started looking up qigong i mean this was you know, smartphones weren't too smart. So I was on a desktop computer in my, in my house, like Googling Qigong and finding different videos. And then that led me to chakras. Then that led me to this and that. And, um, you know, like things like astrology and things I was already kind of uh, familiar with and things, but not necessarily like a full natal chart. And so just one thing would lead to another, then the breath and then, you know, um, alkaline foods and then sun gazing right. you know one time i just walk out my house and turn the corner the sun's right there and i'm gazing with it for like five minutes and then you know just think like synchronistic things like that just began happening and i just was like full deep dive immersion into metaphysics but dreams in particular my whole life i would have like epic wild dreams and i just wow. in intuitively innately knew and felt that there was something to it something more to it than oh you're just having a dream don't worry about it you know and so Right. That's um, what a lot of people say is, oh, it's just a dream. Yeah, when yeah, they have, exactly. They hold exactly. so much more significance. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so that's been a, a fascination and a desire, driving desire of mine to understand ever since childhood, uh, in my first memories even. <laughs> so for the listeners, let's, uh, let's break it down. What is lucid dreaming? Yeah. So lucid dreaming, here, okay, here's a hot take that's totally true. Well, one before I talk about what's true and what's not, <laughs> I don't want anybody listening to believe a single word that I say, you know, don't believe anything you hear me say, yes, use it Same. in a way to, yeah, find out what's true for yourself, you know, cause then you're just going to rely on whether I'm, you know, factual or not, or you just have to rely on believing me or not believing me instead, just create your own experience. Cause that's the difference between believing something and knowing something is experience, you know? So that for one, um, but two, one thing that turns out to be a very hot take among a lot of people um, <laughs> is that lucid dreaming, astral projection, 
and regular dreaming are all the exact same thing. Um, for some reason, a lot of people like get bent out of shape on that, <laughs> but it's true. Mm. Uh, whether you're remembering dreams or not, your consciousness is shifting from your physical body to your astral body and your soul is traversing different planes of existence with loose with dreaming. You're having a memory. You're waking up with a memory that you were somewhere else with lucid dreaming. It's the fact that you're becoming aware that you are gone right. while you're already gone. You know, it's like, wait a second, <laughs> this isn't my body. This isn't the physical reality. This source of light here is not the sun. Uh, what's going on, you know? And then astral projection is simply when people remember leaving and remember coming and or remember coming back. And that's really the only difference. Everything else is all the same. You can do the same things in a dream as you can lucid dreaming and astral projection. Um, it's just a different level of awareness and different level of control. Before we analyze lucid dreams, we kind of ha first have to examine dreams itself, yeah. correct? Yeah. Uh, and levels of the mind, because that, that has so much significance. Uh, what are dreams? Yeah, so dreams are just experiences within the inner levels of the subconscious mind. Uh, you know, like I said, when you sleep at night, your consciousness is shifting from the physical body to the astral body. You're closing off all of your senses which is our ability to experience our outer physical reality and our attention is going within. And so we're going into our subconscious mind and exploring the inner world of our inner consciousness. So instead of seeing things that are going on outside of ourselves, we're giving in, we're given insight into the things that are going on within ourselves. So, you know, I say three rules about dreams, every dream, every dream is about the dreamer, the person dreaming. You know, if you have a dream about, you know, your cousin Willie stealing money from you, it's not, you know, saying, don't trust your cousin Willie. You know, right. I mean, that may be right. true, so, but it's right. <laughs> like I, I've had some weird fucking dreams. Yeah, like everyone's yeah. had some weird fucking dreams. For ex uh, example, I was eating leftover ribs <laughs> at a restaurant in which I didn't buy them at. Yeah, yeah. Right. Nice. So, so what? Are, what's <laughs> at least no, that's a great dream. That's a great dream. Yeah. What, what's the significance of those? type of dreams and what do they mean? Like uh, uh, your cousin Terry stealing money from you. <laughs> yeah. So the way that dreams work is dreams are in images, right? And so within right. our subconscious mind, we have thoughts and thoughts are images. You know, like if I ask you to, to tell me what you ate this morning for breakfast, you can describe it to me because an image of it will pop up in your mind. You know, if I ask you to tell me your dream car, you can describe it to me in color and detail because you can see it in your mind. Uh, so memory and imagination thoughts are images. But even if I say, you know, think of a balloon, you can tell me the color because you can see the image of it within your mind. You know, some people I say that to and they're like, well, I just saw the word balloon. Well, wait, you said you saw the word balloon. You know, what color was right. the word? What font type was it in? You can describe all of that because <laughs> you saw an image. And so our, our thoughts are images. And that's and then we can get into like, why the power of visualization is so powerful because it's forming images, forming thoughts. But anyway, so when we're going into the subconscious mind and assessing these thoughts, we need to understand the language of images, which is a language that all of our minds universally speak. You know, there's idioms within our sayings that, that formulate the same language. But when you understand the language, the form and function of each symbol, then we can extract the, the interpretation and decode the actual dream. Like, for example, you were eating ribs, you know, from a restaurant. Leftover ribs. Leftover, Leftover ribs. ribs. Well, either way, it's food, <laughs> right? We eat food. What's the purpose of food? To to Energy. provide sustenance for the that body. Yes. Yeah. Our teeth yeah. break it down so that we can better swallow and digest the food. Then our body extracts the nutrients to become a permanent part of our cells, tissue, organs, muscles. And then our the rest, the waste, our body will eliminate because it's no longer useful. If it remains, it becomes toxic. Right. Well, oh, the same thing with like our life experiences and the lessons that we have to learn from them. Food will represent the knowledge contained within your life experiences, because the, if we take our life experiences and really break them down and understand what happens, it'll be easier to digest and swallow what's occurred. And then it's easier to extract those life lessons out and it becomes a permanent part of our soul that learning that understanding. Now I understand what forgiveness truly means. Now I understand what self love truly uh. means. You know, now I understand what compassion truly means. And that becomes a permanent part of your soul. And then you can let go of the experience, you know, the experience that caused me to learn more about forgiveness. I can let go. I can let go of cousin Willie, steal, steal money, <laughs> whether it was real life or not, you know, because if I hold on to that, it's going to become toxic. 
And, you know, just like right. you know, the, the waste, the shit, you got to let that shit go, you know, so it'll become toxic yeah. if you hold on to that. So food will represent knowledge. So the fact that you were eating food represents that mm. you were absorbing more knowledge from your life experiences. But we can go into once we understand the basic, then we can go into further detail. Well, it was leftover food. So you're relearning something you're 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 getting more out of a previous lesson like there was a maybe there was a lesson there that you had in in abundance or something where you did learn a lot but now you're still you're still chewing on it you're still observe absorbing even more from it and then a restaurant a restaurant it's not like because the drink could have easily had you pull it from the kitchen right from the refrigerator right. in your own kitchen but you were right. at a restaurant and the restaurant will represent how you're giving value money you're exchanging money for this so you're you're acknowledging how valuable this lesson is because money represents value and since everything in the dream is about the self it's more about like self value so there's more self value that you are it, it uh, uh, accumulating through receiving this knowledge that you are like learning from the life lessons that you're having in life for the last two or three days before you have this dream that's amazing dream <laughs> Wow. Thank you. I mean, so we should never dismiss any dream. Oh yeah. Never, never. Even if it's very minute mundane, even if you only remember one symbol, you know, ah, uh, there was, I was in a car, but I wasn't driving. I don't know where I was going. I don't know what I was doing. I don't know who I was with. Okay. You right. can still extrapolate Consciousness a lot. It's always that. active. It's always doing something. Yeah. Yeah. Whether we're aware of it or not. Yeah. The physical body needs to sleep. The conscious mind needs to rest, but the soul, the astral body, the subconscious mind, super conscious mind, the spirit, none of those need to rest. Your real self, your true self, definitely isn't resting. <laughs> it's right. experiencing. Right. Helen, what uh, I'm sure you've had some weird dreams. What what are some of your weird dreams? Strange, <laughs> obscure. I, I was marveling at how you um Taraki just like pulled that, you know, interpretation, right. dream interpretation fast, out. So that, quick. Yeah. No, it's just... Well, it's, I mean, it really is a language. So it's just really interpreted right. like as if, as if he said something Ooh. in Japanese and I interpreted it for uh, you. That's really all it, right. all it was for me. Right. You've had past lives. I just got this download. Uh, you've had, you've had many past lives in, in, in Egypt. Uh, maybe probably <laughs> I know, if, I know of one, but yeah. Um, I was going to share. Yeah. Last night I thought I had a trippy one where I felt like I was in, I was in a universe and then an old boyfriend was in a universe, but he was like traveling to visit me. And the universe I was in was like, I was like trapped or I was living in a box basically. And it was like just for the purpose of him to visit me. And it felt really, Mm. it felt really, um, not, I don't know what the, I was going to say stifling, but that's not it. It's like, I needed more than that existence. There you go. Mm, Yeah. Feeling confined. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, there you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice. I have no idea what that means. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, well, people people is a great great symbol to, to start with also because we always almost always have other people in our dreams. And so people are also sometimes the hardest things to interpret because like I said, I can I can I can read you this letter that's in a foreign language to you, but only you can really understand what that, what that letter means, you know, what that true message actually represents. Right. So like people, I can tell you, people represent the different characteristics within our own personality. And so the people, the persons, the characters in your dreams will represent the different ways that you can portray yourself, but only you can determine what this old boyfriend would represent. So usually it's like the main quality that comes to mind when you think of them. So like if, if uh, we were all sitting here talking and said, hey, does anybody know somebody who is stubborn, you know, and you, and you think of that person, it's like, oh, that person will represent it. Your subconscious mind is using that person's face, that person's image to convey to you a message about something about yourself so that you can identify what the message is about, what it's about within yourself. So right. and then universes, well, one, like outer space will represent your inner space, but univer- a universe will represent like your your everyday consciousness as a whole you know like the state of your consciousness as a whole because we can we can all be different in different states because consciousness is dual there's the content of consciousness and the state of consciousness so like um for instance if we're in an agitated state of mind you know the different thoughts that make up that state of mind are the content and then you have the state 
But so we have different states of mind that we can be in, you know, content, peaceful, happy, productive, you know, loving, um, agitated, <laughs> confused, right. you know, but the whole, the collective of your consciousness is going to be that universe, right? And so a square, a cube ha is, is the base structure of a cube is a square, which has four sides, which represents stability. You know, a chair also represents stability. The number four represents stability. All of these things, because it, you know, a, a, just everything in the universe, once it reaches four, there's a level of stability with it. And so that will represent the different, the stability that you are experiencing. However, there's a need to expand further, you know, so whatever, whatever main quality that you do see in that person, the subconscious mind is either telling you that there's something there that needs to be addressed, or there's something there, depending on the whatever quality comes to mind, you can determine whether it's like, I need to address and face this within me to be able to expand further, or I need to use and harness this ability to be able to expand further. You know, like maybe that person, when you think of that person, you think of, you know, um, just happiness, you know? And so it's like, I need to utilize my own happiness and that'll be the key to expanding further or maybe agitation, you know? And so I need to address the ways I'm agitated and that will help me to expand further, you know? So however you see that person, that's going to be the key into unlocking that box and expanding further into your own inner universe. Right, right. Yeah. That's so neat. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Helen, was it Vegas? No. <laughs> <laughs> you dropping names. <laughs> I know. Vegas <laughs> uh, is uh, one of my best friends and her ex-boyfriend. So ah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. Year, years ago uh, with my therapist, we were doing gene analysis. Mm -hmm. And this is way before I even got, to, got into metaphysics and she... I would explain to her my dreams and she would she would explain to me that each person in the, in my dream represents an aspect of me yeah, yeah, and then analyze it from there. So I think, I think that's great. And I think what you just talked about uh, reinforces that. So that's great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just knowing that alone can do so much for someone. You right. Know, they, if, even if they don't know anything else, how to interpret any of the rest of the dream, they can kind of look at that and go have a basis point to move off of. All right. So lucid dreaming, how do we become more aware within our dreams and achieve deep lucidity? Yeah. I mean, a basic easy way is, is one of the things with uh, one of the you know facts about dreams is that your dreams are going to be a reflection of your waking life. So the way you use your mind is going to be reflected within your dream. So if we're talking about the difference between regular dreams and lucid dreams, it's just a matter of awareness. You're more aware within a lucid dream. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not just having the experience, but you're aware that you're outside of your body and you're more conscious, right? You're, you're not as asleep. You know, there's a level of right. consciousness within a lucid dream that has to be there in, in order to not be a regular dream. Just like to remember dreams, there has to be a level of consciousness there versus not remembering dreams and just waking up and, I was just, it was just a black void. I don't remember anything. I just woke up and went to, after I went to sleep, you know? So if that's the difference, then we have to have that same reflection within our waking life. So there's many different things that you can do, but essentially the main core of what's needed, if you're wanting to increase the level of awareness within your dreams, you need to increase the level of awareness within your physical life. So we can, you know, how do we experience our, or how are we aware? of our physical reality through our senses. Right, you know, so right. really look, take a moment to look at what you're seeing, not just directly, but also your peripheral. You know, there's an eye exercise that I uh, give to some of my mentees and things, and um, is it just helps strengthen the eyes. One of my students, like eight, nine years ago, um, him and his wife, they both started doing this. And uh, one, one week they came into class and, and they had these old glasses from like the 1980s, it looked like. And I'm like, did you guys break your glass? Like, I thought maybe they broke their glasses and that's all that was left. They're like, no, we were doing the eye exercise and we couldn't really see no more. So we had to go down in a prescription and we haven't had these glasses in 20 years. <laughs> and so, wow. but this, I, it does a lot of other things yeah. also, also helps with, you know, deepening your meditation. But um, essentially you just look straight up as far as you can go, keeping your head still. Look back to center, look straight down, look back to center. I mean, I'm widening my eyes just so that you all see. You don't have to do it like this. Right. <laughs> but, uh. Yeah. 
but then you go to the left and back to center and then to the right and back to center. And after about like 30 right. days of that, then you, you can do the cross and then you can do an X after and then start over and you just go up, down, left, right, uh, back to center each time, diagonal up, left, diagonal down, right, diagonal up, right, diagonal down, left, and back to center each time and then start over. Just do that for like five minutes. Um, so that will also, one, the, the reason I'm saying that it per, it pertaining to what we're talking about now is that will really increase your peripheral vision. Like if you play sport, if someone's listening, they play sports, this is going to increase your court awareness and your field awareness tremendously. But, um, but so that'll help with the peripheral. So really just see right. things, you know, around right. you more. What are you hearing right now? You know, I'm only just now noticing I'm hearing also hearing a small hum from the computer across the room. Or maybe it's the air vent. Uh, that's about all I'm hearing because I have these on. So I don't hear much, yeah. but really listen, so listen more, you know, utilize your senses. What are you smelling? What are you tasting? What are you feeling? Right. You know, feel the space behind you. You know, that's a great exercise to do every once in a while to feel, to increase your awareness, feel the space behind you. It's so fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. So fascinating. Um, so our waking, our dream worlds and our waking life are not mutually exclusive. One affects the other. Oh yeah, absolutely. And the possibilities, the possibilities within dreaming and lucid dreaming, w what is possible in terms of spiritual evolution, spiritual growth, healing. Yeah. I mean, the possibilities are limitless, you know, universal Experience. law of infinity, anything is possible. <laughs> um, but right. as far as like, what is possible for you to go to sleep and uh, become lucid tonight and what all is possible for you to do in this very moment is going to be to the level and degree of what's possible within your mind in general. Like, for example, one time when I was first started lucid dreaming, I was always testing the parameters of things, you know, like, uh, like my very first lucid dream, I was flying and then I thought to myself, oh, what happens if I hit the ground? So I just stopped flying and let myself fall, you know, and then I just like, here's the ground. I just came down, was hover above the ground. Then there was a wall coming. I was like, well, what happens when I get hit the wall? Maybe something different. And then, it, you know, went that back the other way. But anyways, in this one dream, I, um, I became lucid right when I was about to run uh, this race in track. And I used to run track in high school. And I was like, oh man, I get, I get a chance to run track again. This is amazing. This is so much fun. <laughs> I won't get that chance now because I'm out of shape. I'll get dusted. <laughs> but I look up right before the race and the whole track has all these potholes and everything. It's, it's like terrible condition. And I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, well, it's a lucid dream. I can control everything. You know, I look around everybody like, calm down. It's okay. I got this. And, and I like raise my arms up thinking I'm going to smooth out the whole track. And next thing you know, like this, this mount, like the, a mountain comes out of the ground and, and then like a wave, it comes to over on top of everybody in the stadium and everything and everybody's running and screaming. And I'm just sitting there watching. I'm like, huh, I wonder what's going to happen when this hits the ground. Let's find out and see. It's like, again, I'm like testing that I already, I've already tested right. before. I can't get hurt. So let me see what happens. And it smacks. And then there's like this, big sphere cave that I'm kind of in because it just like psh, just held this space. And so then I go outside and I'm looking around and I'm like, Hmm, why did that not work? <laughs> How did I try to <laughs> flatten the smooth the ground, but it turned into a mountain wave tsunami that overtook everybody. And I thought, Oh, it's nighttime right now. Light represents awareness in a dream. I need more awareness. So for some reason <laughs> I, I thought, uh, smoothing out 110 meters didn't work and it turned into a mountain. And for some reason, I had the thought, let me make the sun rise on the horizon. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So I, I go and I raise my hands. And I'm just, oh, and I'm really hi <laughs> hyper focused on, on the horizon, waiting to see just a little spark of light come to, to see that I'm having progress. And then the next thing that I know, all this fire rains down. It's like great big fire drops just raining down on everything. And then I wake up and it was like, Oh, you know, once I woke up, then reason came back in <laughs> and I was like, Oh, right. <laughs> why did I think I could do that? But also, you know, the sun represents super conscious awareness. You know, the super conscious mind is the mind that our spirit uses in the fifth dimension. And so if I'm, if I'm to be able to have the ability in a dream to make the sun rise on the East at my command, that means that I have control of, in, within an instant, bringing more super conscious awareness 
into my existence, into my experience, into my reality. But I don't, I didn't yet have that. I mean, I still don't to that degree <laughs> have the ability to just command super conscious awareness to enter into my consciousness at such a great degree on command. In order for that to happen, I had, because well, what I did experience was fire raining down. Fire represents expansion, expansion of consciousness and rapid expansion of consciousness. And that's what, that, and water represents life experiences. So I would have to have these consciousness expanding life experiences raining down upon me in order to be able to have that ability to, to right. raise that up, you know? Fire so, yeah. So, I mean, in your dreams, you're going to have the level of ability dependent upon what ability you have within your waking mind. Like a lot of people fly in their dreams, but people who right. lucid dream regularly, I don't know if you've experienced this Jay or not, but there's different levels of flying at different times. You know, sometimes I'll take off flying and I can fly as high as I want, as fast as I want. Sometimes it's more I'm just like hopping 800 yards at a time, you know, mm. and sometimes I'm able to fly however I want, but not very fast. So it's all to the flying represents, you know, being free of the you know mental freedom, being free of the things that normally weigh us down in life. So depending on how well I am at letting these things go and being free of these things is going to determine how well I can fly at night as well as your willpower, obviously. Uh, but yeah. Uh, random question. Well, it's yeah. not random. It's, it pertains to, to the topic. Uh, I've had many dreams where I'm running, but I'm too tired to, to complete the run. Like I'm mm -hmm. running and then I'm, I fall, fall asleep and eyes get heavy. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. What, what's the significance of that? Yeah. So um, running will represent putting a lot of effort towards your goals. And so you're, you are experiencing a lot of effort towards your goals, but there's a point in every time you get tired and you go to sleep or just sometimes you go to sleep. Sometimes you get tired. More often than not, I'm just too tired to run. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are you so talking about in the dream itself? Yeah. In the dream itself. Yeah. Yeah. In the dream itself. I'm just, uh, I, just, I always remember I'm, I'm running and I'm too tired to, my legs are heavy and I'm too tired to run. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that just represents like needing more willpower to make sure you reach the end point on your goals. So like whatever goals you have in life, you're putting a lot of energy into it. And so uh, one thing that I would suggest, like the way we, the way we recycle energy is through, like we expend energy throughout the day, but then that, like I was talking about earlier, the knowledge that we receive from the lear learning and life lessons, that's how we recycle energy back in. So like, that's another reason why dream, working with your dreams is so important because some people, right. they, you can go to sleep for eight hours and feel just as tired as when you went to sleep, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> right. some people can go to only sleep like three. Some people talk about, they only sleep three, four hours a day, uh, every single night. And they operate just fine like it's, that. And they're very refreshed. Right. Those type of people probably work with their dreams a lot because they're assimilating their life experiences through their dreams and they wake up and work with that. And then thus they're recycling that energy back into themselves. That's why like, um, you know, uh, sleep mm. in a dream represents assimilation. So like you were like, that's why I was asking about, do you so only sometimes fall asleep? Cause you did say that, or is it mostly uh, like, or you're always falling asleep. So it sounds like sometimes there's just a need or well, at all times, there's a need for just more willpower to really make sure you reach the finish line on your goals in, in the right. timeline right. that you have set yeah. for them. But sometimes it may also mean that there's something you need to assimilate. That's kind of keeping you from getting there. So there's an added yeah. piece of learning, something to learn here to really get over that last hurdle to make it there. Because willpower is just all about, you know, making making a conscious choice and having continuous, unceasing, relentless decisions towards that until your ideal is achieved. So, I mean, a lot of times we do have these goals and we put a lot of energy and maybe we don't see the results that we think we should see at, so far. And it kind of right. know, gets us down. Something like, man, yep. why is I, I, I'm doing everything I know right? Why is this not producing <laughs> the same result? Why is it not even producing the same results it did last week, you know, or last year? And so it, we just have to continue to have unceasing, relentless, continuous action towards that until the ideal is achieved. Uh, I apologize for the influx of people that will be contacting you after they leave this podcast. <laughs> no worries. But. Great business for you. Great business for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. Well, speaking of which, I mean, there's a, a whole, like most of my stuff I give away for free. So even if I don't have enough time to contact and get in touch with everybody, there's like a community that you all can join in also that's um, 
uh, metaphysical uh, out on our website, uh, awakenwithin.us. You can, you can follow the link there and get to it, but awesome. it has a tons of resources. There's a dream symbol glossary that you can uh, download and kind of use for your own guide oh, wow. to decode the symbols. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Tons yeah. I'll, I'll put that, all that info in, in the show notes for sure. Yeah, so yeah. the listeners can, can uh, use that as a resource. Yeah, um, in regards to location, does location matter? Um, is it easier to achieve lucid dreaming in nature as opposed to a concrete jungle? Oh yeah, definitely. Because you'll be more, your body, because what's, like I said, what's happening is you're moving your, you're removing your attention from your physical body and moving it into your astral body. The more it's a, and it's a receptive process, especially as far as like lucid dreaming, you have to, in order to make it happen, you have to be receptive and allow it to happen. <laughs> so the, in nature, right. the more natural environment you can be in, then the more re naturally relaxed your body is going to become, you know, right. because like in nature, if you go out into the woods, it is very dialed down as far as the activity right. that's going on around you. Yeah, you still have like these night thing. creatures going on. Yeah, but in a city, right. and the bigger the city, the more active it is at night. <laughs> you know, but it can be just as like New York or or Vegas or you know L.A. Right. These Miami, these cities are just as active at night <laughs> as they are in the day almost. Right. And so and we're, we're talking about EF, EMF pollutions as well. Yeah, so EMF pollutions, but even Wi-Fi. Just, yeah, but even just the energy that people emit. You know, right. and so just the energetic right. activity. That and that's going to cause a subtle disturbance within your own. It'll just naturally be easier. So not that it's not possible. You don't have to, you know, oh, I'm in a lucid dream right now. Let me go out in my backyard or let me, you know, go to the park and sleep tonight. You know, you don't have to do those <laughs> things. But it does. It does, definitely does help, you know, especially not going to sleep with the TV on will definitely help. Um, it'll definitely help. Influence right. the I, I shut off all my do. shit. Yeah. I shut off all my shit. Like my Wi-Fi, my phone, I put it on airplane mode. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Could you speak to using lucid dreaming to interact with your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. So this now you're getting into a true value and purpose for lucid dreaming. Because a lot of people, when they talk about lucid dreaming, they talk about like the fun things you can do, like, oh, I can go flying or I can do this, <laughs> you know, I can do that. But, you know, where's where's the true purpose in that? Like just to go flying to experience that. If you start doing that every single night, give it three weeks and you'll be tired of it. You know, all, all of these things, you know, it's, but it's, it is fun to do, but where's the true purpose? Where's the lasting benefit that you'll have from it? And as far as using lucid dreaming to interact with your thoughts, that's where the true value and power is. You know, I talk about how dreaming is the number one tool for self-awareness because it allows us this insight into our inner self, you know, the subconscious mind, subconscious mind and conscious minds are two halves to a whole. They're working together to create our reality. You hear people all the time talking about our thoughts create our reality. You know, these different universal laws, thought, cause and effect, thought is cause, you know, law of attraction and things. But when you understand the mechanics of manifestation and how the conscious subconscious minds work together, then you understand the true value that dreams afford you. And as far as the, the ability to increase your self-awareness and become more aware of who you are, of what's going on, how, what is needed to achieve your goals and progress in the ways that you want in life, have the experiences that you want in life and become the person individual you want to become in life. And so when we first understand the insight that dreams afford us, and then we understand that language of mind to where like, if, if you start really practicing interpreting dreams in the universal language of mind, it won't be long before you're in the dream, interpreting the dream while you're in it. <laughs> and so then, <laughs> then when you're becoming lucid and you have that ability, then it's like, oh, okay, there's a horse here. Mm -hmm. okay. And what does horse, horse, mean? horse represents willpower. Yeah. Okay, I have choices. I can either let the horse walk by, I, or I, I can walk up and pet the horse, or I can jump on the horse's back and ride it. You know, or I can beat the horse or kill the horse. There's tons of choices <laughs> you have. But the more right. you understand what that represents, then the more you'll understand how you want to interact with it. Like, for example, early on, I had a lucid dream where uh, I, I was driving this red truck that I used to have, and I was driving past my grandmother's house, and there was this guy following behind me, like, you know, just road raging it up. Mm -hmm. and, and I pull over, 
and I'm in my grandmother's backyard and he hops out and he's like yelling at me and all this stuff and coming up towards me. And, and I just, all of a sudden I reached down out of nowhere and just pull out out of nowhere, a server tray. Cause I was, I was a server at the time um, in a restaurant. And yeah. I was like, I was like, this isn't going to help me. <laughs> and so I put my hand back down and pull it back up. And then there's a garden trowel. And as soon as he's like three feet away from me, I become lucid. And the instant I become lucid, everything freezes. And I realize, I said, okay, I have a couple choices here. I can either, like, or, or well, at first, I realized, oh, this guy represents, because I didn't know the guy. So it's not like when I was talking with Helen before, your ex-boyfriend, what do they represent? You know, but this aspect of myself is showing me what it represents. It's being very confrontational right now. And so I knew it represented the confrontational part of myself. And so I thought, okay, I can, I have a couple choices. I can wake up now and just write down the dream and work on being confrontational, decode the dream and work on it that way. Or I can allow the dream to go on and progress how it naturally progresses, which is what I would do it with lucid dreaming at the time. That's how, that's how I always suggest people start out with lucid dreaming. Just allow the dream to progress how it normally does. Don't change anything and use the lucidity to pull out more details until you really get to a point where you can understand these things with a dream. I said, my third option is I can interact with this in a way of how I want to handle this confrontational part of myself. I thought to myself for a moment and I'm like, it's still frozen. Everything's frozen. I'm just like thinking it to myself and I think, okay, I don't want to be confrontational anymore. I want to change this part of myself and everything's still frozen. And so I real slow, take the garden trowel and dig it straight into his heart. And then I wake up. And so I know now, like with where I'm at with lucid dreaming at this point, I know this is a very serious moment because I just went into myself and formulated like a, a spiritual surgery, you know, like going mm -hmm. in and ripping out a tumor, right. like having a doctor rip out a tumor. The doctor doesn't say, okay, go home, you know, continue doing what you're doing. Go play basketball on Tuesdays and, you know, mow your lawn on Sundays, <laughs> you know, keep eating whatever you're eating. You know, no, the doctor's like, okay, now these next three weeks, we need you to drink lots of water. Don't do anything for the next three days. Just sit and rest. You know, there's like specific right. instructions of what you need to do because you just had this surgery happen. You need to respond accordingly or things might get worse, you know? So the same thing with, you know, changing things in your dream. I know that I just transformed this confrontational part of myself on the inside. So if on the outside in my outer reality, I still go to work and I'm very confrontational with people or meet people out in the public and I'm very confrontational with them. I'm, I'm a Taurus bull. So before I got too deep into metaphysics and meditation and things, I was very confrontational. It wasn't, it wasn't good, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I mean, it wasn't like extremely bad or anything, but for me, it wasn't healthy at all. It was toxic um, and ruined some relationships and friendships and things. But um, mm. I knew that I changed that within myself. So I knew that if I continued to operate the same way, things would be worse. It would have worse repercussions, worse uh, reactions to what I'm doing if I continued forward with that. So I had to make a very conscious choice. Okay, I'm going to work on being confrontational. And things rapidly changed. Like this one friend that I, I worked with, it was like a week later. <laughs> and uh, we would always get into these arguments, heated debates. But it wasn't anything. It was like... Like, like one time I remember we were talking about perspective and how all, like he was saying all of life is only perspective and whatever your perspective is, that's your determination of life. That is life perspective. And I was like, yeah, but that's, there's way more to it than just perspective. And we would have, right. like, we would both have these heated arguments about it. And one time I forget what we were talking about on this particular day, but it was like a week later, he turned to me, he said, Tarak, you're an idiot. <laughs> And normally Ooh. I would have reacted to that and been more con like I would have right. met his confrontation and took it up a level. And <laughs> instead, I just looked at him. I said, you know what? You might be right. Let me let me take a moment to think on it and I'll come back to you and let you know. And it wasn't even like I did have a, there was a moment of this is how I want to respond. And then, no, let me not respond that way. And then that just naturally came out. So it was it was more natural. It was easier to not be confrontational, but I still had to make a choice not to do that. Right. And, uh, and then uh, the look on his face, like just melted away. He was like, uh, okay. And, and we never had an argument ever after that. Right. Never again. It was always very a harmonious discussion and things. And I never even went back to him and told him anything about that, <laughs> but, but it was a <laughs> completely uh, neutralized situation. Yeah. Yeah. Your own inner healing. 
exactly inner work exactly and so wow. that is there's so much power in that yeah there's so much power in that and in and so to helen's question what can you do with like what is that with interacting with your thoughts within dreams i mean you can do you can do a ton you can you can overcome <laughs> you know 10 years of breath work in just one night <laughs> right right, yeah. right uh yeah my mentor always talks about how we receive information and healing in the forms of inspiration, creativity, and dreams. And dreams hold so much weight and power and significance yeah. in our daily lives. Man, yeah, yeah. this is such, such a great topic for today. Such a great topic. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned this in your book, Simultaneous Dream Time. Uh, I've read that many indigenous tribes experience this frequently. I've never had this done, but have you had... Have you had any experience doing this with someone else simultaneous dream time? Um, the way that I, the only way that I've experienced it is um, more through like visitation dreams. So as far as like in the book of like multiple people having similar dreams, I think it may be mostly talking about um, like major events happening and people having precognitive dreams about the same major event. Right. Um, but right. you can also have like, visitation dreams where two people are having the same experience but it's like it's like right now if if we were to say hey let's meet up at this event in houston and we go there and we meet up you know it's it there's there's possibility of that well within the astral plane you know you can go and meet up with people there um so i've had people um you know where we would have a similar dream experience um like for like for example uh when i very first started in the school of metaphysics a friend of uh, who was a classmate there, he had um, he had really bad breath all, all the time, and I, <laughs> and I wanted to tell him, but me and him didn't always really have like the most harmonious relationship, so he's already kind of sensitive in the first place, right? And then hearing it from me right. probably wouldn't be the best either, but I really wanted to share this with him because I didn't want him to continue to experience what I was watching him experience with other people, and um, or myself, <laughs> but. Uh, right. <laughs> then one day we're in class and we always end class with um, our teacher. Like we'll, ha we'll have a shared dream and then we'll interpret it. And then our classmates will offer what they see in it. And then he'll offer further insight after that. And, but this time, for some reason, he said, you know, op open up your dream journals and read the very last dream that you put in there. And so we're all reading them. And then it gets around to my classmate and he's like, uh, this is all I have. I wake up on my couch. There's a knock at my door. I open up the door and there's Tarak and he looks at me, he says, your breath smells bad. And then I wake up <laughs> and I bust out laughing in class. I'm like, oh my God. And they're looking at me, they're like, what's funny? I'm like, I've been wanting to tell you that for weeks, <laughs> but I didn't know how. I guess I found a subtle way for you to accept it. <laughs> and it was hilarious. Yeah, it was wild. It was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I've had that I've had that a lot yeah, where really. maybe like a dozen times where someone will come back to me and tell me that I showed up in their dream and and said something to them and it was something that I had been wanting to say to them but just right. didn't in the in the physical. Right. But that hasn't happened for like maybe 6 or 7 years though. But wow. yeah. Yeah. What a story. <laughs> I've gotten better at, at having hard conversations with people. So through through the astral. Through the yeah. astral. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've learned that negative sacred geometry cities actually contr control the dream world of certain geographical locations. Mm -hmm. uh, are you aware of this? And what can we do to bypass anything that controls or has control over our dreams? Yeah, well just know that you have the ultimate control. You know, thought is cause. Your thoughts create your reality. Now, a, a belief that you have will also have control because a belief is just a thought that you continue to think. So those who have stronger beliefs about certain things will have more parameters and limitations within their own mind that will seem like something else may have control. You know, and so now, yes, there is a tie to the physical energetically. However, physical locations are just that physical locations mm, and right. you can create connections and vortexes and things that have a particular frequency of energy for a particular purpose that aligns with the astral. But 
the thing is, is that the astral is so dynamic. Like the the astral realm is is within the fourth dimension. So the fourth dimension is time, and so we're here in the three dimensions. We have you know length, width, and also depth. That's what separates us from two dimensional beings. We have depth, and two dimensional beings do not. Four dimensional beings. The fourth dimension is time. So right now we're in this third dimension. So anytime we're in the physical body or in the physical reality, we are locked in the present moment. We cannot experience the past. It does not exist. We cannot experience the future. It does not exist. But we have the ever evolving present moment. When we go into the fourth dimension, then there's time. So as far as I mean, you can. As far as answering that question, you know, when were those forms and connections made? So it's very easy and possible to experience within the astral in a certain way to where before prior to any of those forms were made prior to any of your physical incarnations, you know, um, many years into a possible probable future. And so there's so much that's possible there that anything that feels like it's constricting or limiting you within the fourth dimension, um, I guess, unless it's a, a matter of space, because that's the fifth dimension, <laughs> then it's just a matter of a limitation within your mind, usually a formulated belief that was, you know, installed through some way um, in your in your conscious upbringing, in your conscious mind. Wow. Great answers. Great explanations. <laughs> well, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I just I just Googled that real quick and it popped up on the screen. <laughs> I just read it off. It was AI. AI came up with that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> AI. Yeah. Oh, that's that's another episode, man. Yeah. I was about to ask another question, but we won't go there. That's another deep topic. Another hour, two hours. Another hour. You talk about the fourth dimension, and we can freely move between all possibilities of the past and freely move through the infinite possibilities within the future. This kind of explains quantum jumping, quantum timeline jumping. Yeah, absolutely. And we can affect the, we can affect the past and the future. Uh, can you explain, can you expand more on that? And does this yeah. actually explain some of the Mandela effects, how Absolutely. some of the past yeah. events were, were yeah. affected and altered? Yeah. I mean, practice it, try it out. I remember, I remember the very first, I'll tell you another story. I remember the very first time I came across some information about it being possible to change your past. And it was a, a report I read this is, again before smartphones. So I'm, I don't even remember where I was at, but I know I remember being at my desktop and I was reading this article about this, the scientific experience experiments where they would take a random number generator and a bunch of people in a room and they would run the random number generator like a hundred times and see, or, or like a thousand times, something like that, some large number. And how frequent did these numbers, did certain numbers pop up? And then they took these people in a room and they gave them all one number and to all think about, and they all thought about the one number. And then they brought the random number generator into the room, ran it, however many times, you know, a thousand times, 10,000 times, who knows? And that one number came up in an Im improbable amount, like uh, um, a amount of times that was improbable. Like it should not have been this much more than all these other numbers. Right. And so, and they did it, they did the experiment a couple times to verify. And, and it's like, it's not a fluke, you know, this your consciousness has an effect on this somehow. Well, then they did it with running the random number generator a bunch of times and then bring it into the room and running it and not releasing the results and then having people come into the room and like come up with a number collectively, think of the number and then it would they pull up the results and it changed the results from the past. Now, some <laughs> could say it changed the results. Some could say that it, you know, maybe they just intuitively perceived what number came up in probably much more than the rest. And they all just collectively did that. But the fact that it, a number did come in in a much higher number than normal with all the thousand times, like it's like a thousand times they ran it and the uh, only one number, the most one number popped up was like four times, you know what I mean? Out of these thousand, uh, you know, 10,000 numbers and, or whatever. Well, all of a sudden on this one, it popped up 20 times. So it's like, it's an improbable amount that this came up. So it does have an effect. And I remember reading this, like, man, your past can have an effect. And at the time, I mean, I was, like I said, it was early on, I was still serving tables. So, you know, I'm, I'm strapped for cash check, you know, living payday to payday. Cause you get paid cash waiting tables every day <laughs> and it's around <laughs> tax time. And I remember, uh, it was like two or three days later, uh, me, me and my friend, we always like, we would, we would post our taxes and file them like February 1st, the earliest day we could. And we'd always get them like two or three weeks later. 
This is like end of February. We still hadn't gotten it. We had talked about it before. Like, man, you haven't get yours yet? I didn't get mine yet either. This is weird. You know, because and, and I remember waking up like three days after I read this article and he says, he calls me up because it was early. Oh, man, I just got a letter from the IRS said it's going to be delayed another month to a month and a half. He was like, he was like, did you get that letter? I said, no, nah, I didn't. I said, no, I didn't get that letter. Don't speak that out for me. He, he said, no, <laughs> it's happening. I got the letter. You're going to get the letter. Yours is delayed too. I said, no, that may be true for you. That's not true for me. And I just hung up on it. Right. And I, and then the art, the idea of the article came to mind. I said, I'm about to change my past. So I sat down and I, I on my couch, oh. I closed my eyes and I just visualized very intently pulling up my phone, opening up the app, and the money being there and me being really excited about it. And, and I also right. visualized calling him back and telling him about it. Right. And then I opened my eyes right out. I, I probably spent like five, 10 minutes visualizing this over and over and visualizing every detail, calling the number to call him back, the whole conversation we would have. And, and I, I opened my eyes, I opened up the app, plugged it in and my bank account, it, it had deposited and it was my new balance was three thousand three hundred and thirty three dollars and thirty three cents. <laughs> wow. wow. And that and that for me, that was like confirmation, because otherwise I probably would have been like, mm, did it work or was it just coincidence? You know, because, again, I was very early. I was very skeptical to a lot of things I was learning and implementing and applying. But that was like like I've never even had a repeating number as my balance ever. <laughs> you know, and th today it's that and, and it's all that's threes. such an amazing example. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. Yeah, we've got a three month old. <laughs> Just woke up. <laughs> I know. How's the baby doing? Doing wonderful. Doing. She's doing wonderful. Yeah, she's growing fast. She's getting smart. Now it's it's nice because now it's kind of to a point where she doesn't cry all the time. She tries to talk, so it's just like I, 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 I. So, it's, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's at least nice that it's not like wailing anymore. <laughs> but, right. But yeah, but it's it's fascinating to watch the development and growth yeah that's amazing brand new life uh helen's due uh pretty soon oh congratulations yeah nice nice thank you congratulations likewise yeah, thank you thank you <laughs> um but i just want to expand on expand further on what you just said that was such yeah, yeah. a great example su such a great story and j just like the possibly we talked about the possibilities earlier possibilities within that within the dream world the fourth dimension to say, I, I was talking to this to my girlfriend about this with my girlfriend the other day. Mm -hmm. Like, say you never grew, grew up with love, and then you 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 become aware at a certain point in in your consciousness. You go back in time. You you, you meditate. You travel the fourth dimension in the dream world, or in the waking state. You send that person love. You've changed time. Yes, you've changed time. This is the power. Yes, of this of this conversation, uh, of of the awakening in general. Mm -hmm. My God. It's powerful stuff, powerful stuff. Yeah, and we and we intuitively and inherently know this. Like, like for example, yeah. you you can probably go to a therapist and just give them a story about how you weren't loved as a child. And uh, nine yeah. times out of ten, I bet they'll give you some sort of exercise of like, okay, let's close our eyes now. Let's bring that child <laughs> to the present. And your child healing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that that person may not know anything about metaphysics or the you know, but and so we're really all we're doing is just describing the mechanic, metaphysical mechanics of how this right. is possible and how it's done. And then thus leveling our awareness of it to make it more powerful in being able to do it. Because like I said, belief is a major part of it. Like for that story, if I would have first pulled out my phone and pulled up the account and saw, you know, $220, I would have, I would have, <laughs> it would have been a lot harder right. for me to formulate yeah. that thought and create a whole different reality because I now had a very strong belief of what that balance really is. So right. the energy that I'm putting into the thought form that I'm creating, that I'm visualizing, isn't going to be the same. The the mm -hmm. how long I'm doing the exercise probably wouldn't have been the same. I probably just did it for a minute or two. Let's try it. Nope, didn't work. See that article is bullshit. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and so the level of belief has right. a ton to do with it. You know, belief, and so, energy, it all creates your reality. It all absolutely, creates your, your reality. absolutely. But yeah, that's very possible to be able to to be able to go back and change that in time and re rewrite your own narrative to your own life. Absolutely stuff powerful fucking stuff man <laughs> yeah thank you for being on the show today yeah absolutely no problem thanks for having me <laughs> all this has been so fascinating and now we've reached the now what part of our episode so tarak what would you have 
left to say to our audience about lucid dreaming and the power that it can harness. Absolutely. Now what? This is amazing. <laughs> so what I would say is, um, like I said at the very beginning, don't, oops, don't believe anything that you just heard, but find a way to implement it into your life. So the different exercises that I may, may have described, you know, practice those. Um, if, if I didn't provide one, you can easily Google any type of exercise, you know, like concentration is very big in remembering your dreams, lucid dreaming, because you're, you are where your attention is. So if you become lucid, if you don't have control over your attention, you're going to have no control over navigating where you go or where you're at or what you experience. And if the level of control that you do have is dependent upon the level of control of your attention. So I didn't provide any concentration exercise, but you can easily Google 20. <laughs> so find a way to implement these things into your life, put them into practice, create an experience for yourself, start writing down your dreams every single night. Even if you don't know how to interpret it, just write them down. That's going to create a stronger relationship, just writing them down and not interpreting them and giving them more attention because it's giving a stronger relationship with your conscious mind and subconscious mind. You're naturally going to increase your intuition because intuition is the power of the subconscious mind. You're naturally going to have a stronger connection with your own soul, which is your own soulmate, thus having a stronger bond and being more whole within yourself and more centered. So even if you don't interpret your dreams, just writing them down will have an effect on all of these things. So that would be a great thing to do now. Now what? Write them down. <laughs> Work with go. them. Now yeah. what? It's perfect. Now what? Yeah. Day, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> this is so much fun. Thank you for being on. Yeah, you're welcome. It was an honor. Uh, Tarak, Absolutely. two things. Where can the listeners find you? Mm -hmm. And is your book uh, released yet? Or when will it be released? Uh, do not not released. It was delayed a little. And then since the baby, it's been delayed a lot. <laughs> okay. uh, I had a plan for like four books this year, and I still only have one. Um, but I should be able to get at least definitely two or two, three out this year. But anyways, um, it's not out quite yet. Um, should be I'm I'm shooting for the fall for this, for the lucid dreaming okay. book to be released lucid, but you can find me at my website, uh, awakenwithin.us. Um, that will lead you to all the things like the metaphysical mastery community has tons of resources, you know, uh, expanding your third eye, lucid dreaming, the, all the courses are available in there for purchase or as a mentee, you get all the courses for free and that's only like five bucks, but the metaphysical mastery, uh, community is completely free. There's tons of stuff in there. Uh, but yeah, that's where you can find me. Awesome. I'll make sure to put all that info in the show notes. Yeah. Tarek Rock, it's been such a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so Appreciate much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. If you like this episode, please subscribe. I'm your spiritual awakening coach, JR. And I'm your master energy healer, Helen. Until next time, everyone. Peace.